Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. I'm going to redo this uh, live simulation launch with the March 1st, 2013 SpaceX flight. And this time I'm going to let the autopilot fly the uh, SpaceX Falcon 9 because I want to see how it compares with the real world flight. Um, I suppose it's possible and even likely that when I'm flying it manually, I'm just doing such a poor job that I'm getting really far ahead, but I don't think that's going to be entirely the case. I think you're going to find out here with the autopilot that it's just as, it's just as far ahead, if not, or very close to it as I was flying manually. So we're going to warp time forward here again. We're going to get to about uh, 310 seconds when we actually do the launch. I'll try to I'll try to get everything exactly as close to the same as it was before so that everything matches up identically. Okay, I know the video starts it here, so let me start the video. All tanks at pressure. And I'll change the time using... T-minus 20. Okay, 20, that's fine. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Auto pilots active. Now lift off of the Falcon 9. Dragon ascends to first stage acceleration. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Falcon 9 has indeed cleared the tower. Right. The advantage here also of using the autopilot is that we can kind of look at the external view in order. Starting gravity turn. First Terminal count launch is complete. So let's hear their Stand first by. call out. Their first call out is when they're at 200 and some odd meters a second. Let me switch the color. There we go. No. Power systems nominal and we have a good telemetry lock on stage one and two. Look at the velocity in orbiter. First stage propellant utilization active. And remember, their first call out's not till 200 and some meters. Vehicle is 6 kilometers in altitude, velocity of 241 meters per second, and downrange distance of 1 kilometer. Yeah, the, the, the add-on in the orbiter is just way inaccurate, because I was also very high. Vehicle is supersonic. And don't get me wrong, it's a great add-on, and I appreciate all the work that the developers did to make it. I don't mean to take anything away from them. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. By any means. The space shuttle is a little bit off as well, but this is a lot farther off than the space shuttle. Second stage has started engine chill. And remember, this is all autopilot. I'm not doing any control here. I'm just F1 back and forth between the internal and external. Shutdown of two engines. So we should have lost a little bit of thrust. Vehicle I remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle is 30 kilometers in altitude, velocity of one kilometer per second, and downrange distance of 23 kilometers. Relative inclination is not going to be very good because we're already. Dragon power systems normal. Time to node's already increasing. So we're at Miko stage one. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle is 51 kilometers in altitude, velocity of 1.8 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 59 kilometers. See, they're half the speed we are. Approaching Miko 1. I didn't hear what their altitude was. Miko 1. Pass then, Miko. Like computers in second stage. Dragon has sent Miko. Miko 2, stage 1 shutdown. Stage separation confirmed. Hmm, yeah, this is way ahead. And back ignition confirmed. AOS wallops. And we're not talking about a second or two, we're talking 
What is that, a full minute? Please proceed to procedure 7.101, Dragon on orbit activation deployment. Standing by for Dragon separation and prop priming. Second stage propulsion systems nominal. The autopilot Vehicle doesn't... remains on nominal trajectory. Vehicle is 148 kilometers in altitude, velocity 3.2 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 346 kilometers. So we're about the same altitude. See, so the autopilot does definitely did a better job on the ascent than I did. Second stage propellant utilization active. It's pitching up because it can sense that the vertical speed's getting too close to zero. Now it's vertical acceleration is almost, it's, it's okay, it's over zero now, so it's climbing. See, time to apoapsis is increasing. So it's interesting that the, even the autopilot makes that type of maneuver. It doesn't have it calculated so well that it doesn't have to adjust pitch during the flight. That's interesting to note for me. Because I kind of almost feel like, you know, once you start the gravity turn, it should be continuous and you should never have to pitch back up. But vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle is 182 kilometers in altitude, velocity 82. of 4 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 541 kilometers. See, it's altitude 182, so it's above us, but it's we're we're faster. You know, it's just hmm. interesting. I'd be really curious when I get up to orbital velocity, which is only going to be another 2,000 meters a second. Just how far off in time? will be between the recorded flight. Take a look at the line plane MFD, I'm curious. Second stage propulsion systems look good. This relative inclination is counting down, but it's Power systems look nominal, and we have a good telemetry lock on stage two. It's only going to get so good, though, because the time to the node's increasing, so it can't get to zero. I hate this chair. It squeaks and cracks every time I move. Vehicle is 200 kilometers in altitude, velocity of 4.6 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 767 kilometers. I have no idea what my downrange is. Um, I guess if I targeted KSC, I could get that information. 1,000 kilometers, I, f I forgot what they said their downrange was. Coming up on orbital velocity, apoapsis increasing. I think it's gonna. I think I set it for 3:30. Okay, so we got Miko at seven minutes ten seconds, according to the recorded video playback. And it's not gonna reach that for like another 80 seconds. So we were 7:10, and I think the video gets to like 8:30 or 8:40 before it cuts out. So that's the difference. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle is 210 kilometers in altitude, velocity of 5.6 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 1,080 kilometers. IMU and GPS look good. So the total relative inclination difference for the autopilot was 0.23, but that's not... Vehicle's passing through the head-on gate. ...entirely the autopilot's fault because it depends I may not have launched at the most ideal time for the autopilot, but I knew it wouldn't get to zero Stage because two propulsion systems continue to be nominal because the time to the node was increasing. Eh, and the orbiter crashed. Well, that sucks. But they're coming up on Miko here in just a moment, anyway. 
again, it was 7.10, according to the video playback time when I, hit, and terminal guidance. when I hit Miko. So now we're 80 seconds past. FTS is saved. Ninety seconds. So that's a minute and a half. That's that's a big difference. A minute forty. One minute fifty seconds. So the SpaceX in order is like two minutes ahead. Hello, escape. There's two minutes. Two minutes, ten seconds. It's even more. Shut down, confirmed. Computer is in separation state. There you have it. Two minutes, ten seconds. That's that's a pretty big big Dragon difference. Vehicle is vehicle is orbital. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop Parity. the video. I got the information I wanted to know, and I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, if you like the video, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And uh, just let me know what your thoughts are on this whole thing. Um, if, if you've flown the SpaceX module, what kind of results have you had? Have you ever tried to compare it with the real flight? And uh, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think. See you in the next video.